The Apartheid Museum in Johannesburg chronicles a long and dark time in our country's history, but it also celebrates courage, selflessness and determination. It was such a story that prompted Karishma to visit. I'm thrilled that I've managed to make it to the Apartheid Museum in Johannesburg, even more so as they're currently running an exhibition entitled Resistance in Their Blood. The exhibition documents the story of a family whose struggle stretches back to the beginnings of Gandhi's Satyagraha principles of passive resistance. I'm going to find out more. The title refers to the sense of commitment that was passed down from one generation of the Naidu Pillai family to the next and which inspired them to oppose racially based oppression and injustice by using passive resistance, protest and unflinching activism. The Naidu Pillai story interests me because most stories about the struggle are dominated by men and even though this story starts with the patriarch, Dambi Naidu, it involves a large number of women and I'm privileged enough to meet two of them today, Shanti and Ramani. Ladies, welcome to Mela. Welcome. Tell me about where you grew up and the significance your house held. We grew up in uh, Don Fentin, 18A Rocky Street. Our home was a very happy home. My mum and dad and five of her children. My mother used to cook for the family, but then about four or five comrades used to just walk in and, you know, there was always enough food for everybody. Mandela used to come, Bram Fisher, Helen Joseph, Lelen Ngoi. As children, they were all our aunts and our uncle. Why did you choose to be so active within the struggle? We didn't choose to be active. We were born into the struggle. We grew up in a political home where there were political discussions. Tell me about your grandfather, Tambi Naidu. Tambi Naidu was born in Mauritius. Together with a brother and sister, they decided to come to South Africa. He was 14 at that stage. In Johannesburg, they set up a small forage shop and he became wealthy in this way. And at the age of 19, he formed the Tamil Benefit Society to help the community. How was your family involved with the Satyagraha campaign? When my grandfather came to South Africa, and there was a community of indentured laborers, and they were not allowed to sell their their ways on the street to make a living. So my grandfather said, he went to then Johannesburg City Council and said, you have to give permits to these people to do their business. And of course they didn't. So my grandfather said, whether they give it to us or not, we are going to stand there and sell our fruit and vegetables. We need to make money. We need to earn a living, you know, and that's our Satyagra started. Eventually, Gandhi came to the Transvaal and he made contact with my grandfather and then they worked together, you know. And that's when they sort of formed the Satyagra movement and the Transvaal Indian Congress and they started the struggle together. Amma was actively involved with the Women's March and Ramani, you went along with her. Amma was a member of the executive and uh, together with Lillian Goy, Helen Joseph, Ruth Mompati, and a number of other people who were involved. And Mom, she became active and helped organize the Indian women in the community we were living in. And this culminated in the big march to the Union building. The big march of 1956 has gone down in history as a milestone in the struggle against apartheid and the 9th of August is now commemorated as National Women's Day in South Africa. As the daughter of activist lawyer Bram Fisher, Ilse Wilson knows the family well. Ilse, how did you come to know the Naidu family? Well, I've known them all my life because my father and Roy Naidu were very close friends. Why do you think it's so important for their story to be told and remembered? Well, first of all, I think it's a most remarkable family that you have so many generations of activists. And particularly in the very dark days of late 60s and early 70s, where political activity had been smashed by the, by the apartheid government, Rocky Street was the one place where things still happened. And Amma was the core to that. And Mrs. Pillay, Amma's sister-in-law in Pretoria, held that whole community together. Tell me more about the pivotal role that women played within the struggle. The women were absolutely extraordinary. I mean, Roy died when he was quite young. 
And Amma, left with five children, not only held the family together, she held the struggle together. You know, that's so inspiring to me as a young Indian woman today. But why do you think these stories aren't being told? Maybe women just get things done without having to be praised for it. Yes, exactly. I think so too. <laughs> Freedom in South Africa was won at a very high human price. And it's a debt that can never fully be repaid. Stories such as that of the Naidu Pillai family must not be forgotten. And it's well worth attending the exhibition, which will be on until September the 1st.